Chubbsters and Chubby Chasers, where have you been? I've missed you. Well, it's been a couple of weeks. What have we been up to? A few things have happened. First of all, I've got a little bit more information for you on what I need to do to fly here in Spain. Turns out I don't need to do a conversion course. The course I did in Australia is fine. In actual fact, I don't really think I needed to do that for here, but I do have to have insurance. But I have found a place thanks to some of the comments that people have left me on these videos, I found a place that will provide insurance and I've had a look through some of the policies and they're pretty good. All I have to do here is have insurance to fly off public land and that's what I'm gonna do. The policies are pretty good. Some of them will either in include helicopter rescue insurance, just in case things go a little bit wacky. So there's the good news. So what do I need to do next? Next thing I need to do is I need something to fly in. I've got a paramotor, as you know, can't foot launch yet, so I'm not quite sure I can get out of the harness once I get into the air. So I'm building a trike. Hello? Kylo, how are you doing, mate? Thumbs down, me? No, mate, it wasn't me. No, honest, I, uh, have you tried Woody? It might be Woody. Yeah, it's not me, mate. Much love, Kylo. Now, what I'm trying to do is, is build a trike that attaches to the existing harness. The idea behind this trike is that I want to be able to remove it and to be able to use the Nirvana Instinct as a foot launch paramotor, because the aim is to be foot launching. The only reason I'm not trying to do it now is I just want to get back into the air as soon as possible gain a few more hours and then I'm going to take myself down to the beach when I've got a little bit more confidence and do some foot launching. I'm also going to need a bigger harness. I've just kind of been putting off buying the harness at the moment um, because it's it's not cheap and you know uh, I want to make sure I'm ready for it before I end up spending another five or six hundred English pounds. What I'm doing, as you can see here with the paramotor, this is the T-piece that I made previously. Now this is going to form the front of the frame of the trike. The idea is there's going to be two parts to the frame. There's going to be the front that attaches into the T-piece. There's going to be the back that attaches into the 14 millimeter supports. This frame then is going to cradle the bottom of the fuel tank and add support as well to the fuel tank. This will form the basis of a frame to which I will attach the wheels at the back and also the front wheel. Now, as you can see, this is the T-piece that we already made. This goes into the Nirvana. You remember there's a spring pin there that holds that in place. And then this goes to the arm assembly to which the glider is attached via the carabiner. This is a fuel tank. I think it's a little bit out of um, scale. So that's the fuel tank and this is the seat. The idea is that I'm going to change this rear strut and put a T piece in this. We're also going to have some tube that comes down here that's going to support the front of the paramotor. There will be a plate underneath this fuel tank that will support the fuel tank and this will attach to the rear bracket. So that will give us a way of fastening the paramotor via here and here onto this trike assembly. These are going to be the wheels then in some configuration at the back and the front wheel at the front. So what we'll end up with in section is we'll have a rear axle. At the back here then will be some kind of a plate and there'll be an attachment roughly here to the rear and an attachment at the front. And then we will along here have some kind of a wheel or um, it's either that way or alternatively I have also considered like this too. So I'm going to have a look at that. I haven't quite decided yet, um, but that's roughly going to be it from the plan. But if we look an AP view, anterior posterior, that's what some of us call it. That's the seat that you would sit in. We're looking front to back. Here you have the arms. 
that attach to the carabiners. That's the fuel tank. And what I'm going to do is into these T's. This is where I've put the T's. Is I want a piece of steel that comes down there, down there, under here, back up there, and into there. So a little bit rough. So basically what we're going to have is we're going to have a piece of steel that's going to be like this. So that's the first piece that I'm going to actually be making. So I hope that's not as clear as mud. That's basically what, what the idea is. So let's get on and make it. So today's chore really is very simple. It should be to the rest of you. It's all about bending a piece of tube. Now there's going to be four bends in this tube in total, that's all. And I guess to those more experienced, you're probably talking about 10 minutes work. But I spent most of the day on this, uh, mainly because I'm, I'm no expert and, and uh, I had a few issues. The first issue was I was a little bit naive about my ability to bend the mild steel. Now I've done tube bending before. I've I've bent conduit in the past, slightly thinner walled steel tubing, and I used to use a a bending spring. And I found a bending spring quite easy to use when it came to bending conduit. I thought it was going to be the same with the mild steel, and I bought a bending spring, and I got myself into a little bit of trouble straight away on the first bend. And this was actually a practice bend. What I bought. A bending spring and as you can see even with the spring in the middle when I bent the steel it kinked and the kink gripped the spring and I couldn't get the spring out hmm. And it took me a little bit of work to get the spring out. So what started off as a spring that was about, oh, I don't know, three quarters of a meters long, it turned into a spring that was about five meters long. Yay! Uh, but you live and learn. So I was stuck, you know, and that was the sort of roughly the same day or the day after I did the, the filming for the first part of the trying. So then what I needed to do is I needed to find a proper tube bender. And that's not easy. Spain, it's, you know, it's better than Australia was for infrastructure and for finding things. But some things can be a little bit difficult to find in the shops. And I couldn't find a tube bender. But I did find something on Amazon. I'll put the link down below to my tube bender. Uh, I am pretty bloody impressed with it. I, I, I will be honest once I actually got it working. But... I then had to kind of figure out how to use it and I had a little play at using it myself and um, I had to watch a video in the end to kind of figure out how it worked properly. The issue I've got is that this tube bender is designed to be bolted down to a desk or a workbench and I didn't have any bolts as it turned out and also I was struggling for space a little bit. So I tried to use the vise. Now, when I watched a YouTube video on somebody else using the very same tube bender as mine quite successfully, they kind of put the tube bender plate in the, in the vise horizontally and gripped it in the vise. It was a great idea. Problem was, is my vise jaws don't open wide enough. I've got a bit of a baby vise, it looks like. So I wasn't able to do that. I then tried putting it in vertically. I thought if I grip it with the vise vertically, I can use it as a pipe bender vertically. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, but the vise wasn't able to grip tight enough. And every time I tried to apply pressure and put a bend on the pipe, um, it just pulled the tube bender out of the vise. I got a little bit frustrated. So I spent a bit of time on this. In the end, uh, I decided that I was going to have to mount it on the bench somewhere. The benches that I've got are quite lightweight. I've got no heavy kind of clout bench or, or metal topped bench or heavy wood bench. Uh, the benches I have have kind of got this uh, medium density fiber board kind of a surface to it and, and they're little panels that you put in. Uh, not the heaviest, great workbenches, but, but not really good for heavy work. Still, I, I bolted it on and I had to use the bolts that had previously fastened my vise on. So I had to take the vise off and use these to, to bolt on the tube bender. So a lot of messing around. But you can see here, 
that I'm successfully bending the steel and uh, this tube bender bloody works well. It works really, really well. So that's what we've got. That's gonna go into those brackets that I made. And that's going to for form the forward part of the frame to the trike. Beautiful, eh? Look at that! <laughs> hey! You can see this fits into here and goes down. And it's going to support the bottom of the tank. So there's going to be a plate here, a plate there, and we're going to have another bracket at the back and the wheels. And this is an assembly that's going to be able to be removed. So we remove this. This forms part of the trike. Pretty snazzy, hey? Part two. Oh my God, I've been in there so long, it's almost dark. Well, that's it, another day in the workshop and things. Um, as I always say, thank you very much for supporting this channel. It's been amazing, over 600 subscribers now. This is getting absolutely ballistic. If you've been enjoying what I'm doing, don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon, follow, like, all that kind of business, and I'll see you in the next video. It's getting windy. Bye for now. <laughs>